First Chronicles chapter 22. After 21, the purchase of the property. We left David at, he has an old, he's purchased the threshing floor. He has built the altar. He has slain the oxen. He's offering them to the Lord. The angels told, put the sword in thy hand. Then David said, so we're continuing from chapter 21. This is the house of the Lord God. There's nothing there. Just a threshing floor and wheat. David has knowledge. What we've looked at the title deed of this property of ordinance threshing floor. David is standing there right now. There's no building. Well, I don't know what the threshing floor is. But I mean, there's no temple. He says, this right here, that altar that, that is burning right now and smoking up to God, that God likes that. He said, this is the house of the Lord. There's no house there. Yeah, but barns don't have to say. There's no temple there. There's no tabernacle there. House is not the building. It's not the, 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 the structure. And this is the altar. There's the altar that he built in 21 of the burnt offerings for Israel. Now let's look at chapter 28, verse 11 real quick. Chapter 28, verse 11. We'll be looking at a few verses. In chapter 28, verse 11, And David gave to Solomon, his son, the pattern of the porch, and of the houses thereof, and of the treasures thereof, and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner, inner parlors thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat. Look at that. And the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sat David down one day and said, draw this. Draw this. There it is right here. Put that line there. Put that measurement. And that's exactly what happened with Moses when he's up on the mount. The Lord gave him the pattern for the tabernacle. Twice this building, the tabernacle, it's got the fine linen, it's got the, the, the goat hair, it's got the badger skin, it's got the gold, it's got the brass, it's got the pins. And was, the, was God giving to Moses, this is how you build it. And in Exodus and all that, he, said, he tells Moses a roundabout way, you know, make sure you follow the pattern. Holy Spirit sits David down one day and says, okay, draw it out. So that pattern has been given to David, and David knows right where he's going to be. That's going to be the temple, though there's no temple. In verse 2, chapter 22. And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel. Wait a minute, why didn't, why didn't he bring the Jews? Why didn't he call his own people? Because there's no in the day that when there would be no more temple for a period of time called the church age, strangers will come to God. Strangers will come to the Messiah. The Jews will utterly reject. And there will be no more temple until the tribulation period. Now if it's built during the church age, if it's built at the tribulation, during the tribulation, I don't know. But there will be a time when the strangers will come to God. And he set masons to hew wrought stones, worked stones, stones that have been worked. And later on we'll read as we study, those stones were cut and made not in Jerusalem. And it will record that there was not an iron tool heard in the building of the temple. Everything was done offside. Now, we have to look at another verse here, real quick. A uh, few verses about this mason. First place, we're going to look at 2 Samuel 5.11. And I'll tell you why when we come back to Chronicles. 2 Samuel 5, verse 11. And these are the places where the masons are. I think there's seven or eight. 2 Samuel 5, 11. 
Because there's a group of people called the Masons. And I'm going to tell you what they taught, what a Mason taught me under threat of, of studying the Mason, Masonry. And Haram, king of Tyre, sent messages to David and cedar trees and carpenters and Masons. That's the first time that word shows up there. Masons. So, see, that's where it is. Also, carpenters is the first place. To show. Carpenters and Masons show up in the same passage, first time. And they built David a house. So they built David a house. 2 Kings 12.12. 12. 2 Kings 12.12. 12. And we're just looking at scripture with scripture for a moment. 2 Kings 12.12. 12. And, ma and to masons, there they are, hewers of stone, and to buy timber and huge stone to repair the breaches of the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord's already there. They are hired to repair the temple. They were hired to build David a house. Here they're hired to repair the house. Chapter 22, 2 Kings 22, verse 4. Second Kings twenty two four. That's an error. Second Kings twenty two four. That's not six. Not verse six. How did I get a four from the six? Okay, verse six. On to carpenters. And builders and masons, there they are, to buy timber and hew stone to repair the house. The house is there. There to repair it. Notice how carpenters keep showing up too. That's just saw that now. That's interesting. First Chronicles 14 1. Here's the carpenters again. Hmm. Interesting. Now, hiring the king of Tyre, that he's, this, this, the king of Tyre has helped much with David's house. He's helped much with, with the, the house of the Lord. He's helped much with Solomon. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messages to David and timber of cedars with masons and carpenters to build and house David's house. David's house. David doesn't build anything of the temple. David's house. And then 2 Chronicles 24.12 2 Chronicles 24.12 In a couple verses, I'm going to show you what they teach that is not really scripture. If you wouldn't believe it. Second Chronicles twenty four twelve. And the king and Jehoiada gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord. There's the house of the Lord and hired masons and carpenters. Isn't it? I just realized carpenters keep showing up masons. But here's the masons after the house of God. One more place. Ezra three seven. Ezra three seven. Now, in Ezra, Solomon's temple has been destroyed by the Babylonians. Ezra's going to build the second temple. In Ezra 3, 7. From the first, uh, first, uh, first, they gave money and also unto the masons and unto the carpenters. There they are again. And meat and drink and oil. Unto them of Zidon. There's Zidon and them a tire. There's tire again to bring cedar wood from Lebanon to the Sea of Joppa, according to the grant that they had from Cyrus, the king of Persia. Now they're going to build a temple, but not Solomon's temple, Ezra's temple. Now back to Chronicles 22 2. 
And he sent masons to hew wrought stones to build the house of God. This is the only place where it says masons build the word of God. And masons have built themselves on one of the prides is we were the sole architects and builders of the Temple of Solomon. And when we're coming up to the building of Solomon, but we did not see their class of people in the actual building. Now, Dave is the only place where it's reckoned that they were hired for that temple. The temple's not built yet. We've seen them after the temple's built. We've seen them repair the temple. That's important because their sole belief is, you know, we took the, the part of te Solomon's temple. Well, not in the Bible. And David prepared iron in abundance. You're going to see a lot of abundance for the nails. Now, about these nails, 2 Chronicles 3.9. Just a little interesting fact here. 2 Chronicles 3.9 about these nails. There's something about them. We don't know the birthday of Jesus, but watch these nails. 2 Chronicles 3, verse 9. And the weight of the nails was 50 shekels of gold. We are given how many nails were built and David prepared them of iron. They're iron, but they're weighed by the gold standard. I don't know how many nails that, I don't know how many nails are in the shekel. For the nails for the doors of the gate. And for the joinings. That's the only time that word shows up, join. And it's where, you know, you got two pieces of wood going together. You use a nail. And by the way, that's not even a word recognized. When I type joinings in for a tag, it told me it's not a word. No, it's a word now. And brass, iron and brass, in abundance, there's that abundance, without weight. You, you couldn't weigh it. Man, there's is a stockpile of piles. And I would picture this as, when I grew up as a child, going to the junkyard. The junkyard would have one section of tin, one section of aluminum, one section of brass. You had the copper section locked up. That you people still, you know, you had one section of old lawnmowers, and you had this section of old wash machines and stuff like that. And I would assume, I assume, this is what David had. Over here is brass. Over here is gold. Over here is silver. Over here is iron. And just preparing. So David could not. We're going to read. David could not build the temple. We'll study that another night, Lord willing. But he sure can make the supplies. Also, cedar trees in abundance. Those are beautiful, smelly trees. Nice trees. Keep the bugs away. But you know what we're going to come across, Lord willing, if we get to it, the Lord tarries? Solomon is going to cover them with gold. And I don't know if you've ever seen cedar, but it is a pretty colored wood. It smells good. There's nothing like going out in the woods and cutting cedar. That just smells so good. And you put it in the back of a pickup truck and you just smell it coming home. And you take little pieces and you put them in your, your closet and you just put them around the house. They're good. Times grow up as a kid. So cedar. Trees in abundance for the Zidonians. Zidonians are craftsmen of the sea. They're craftsmen of trees. They're just craftsmen. And they're also idolaters. And one of the wives that Solomon is going to have of, of idolatry would be the women of Zidonia. And their attire. That's a seacoast nation that God destroyed twice. And the second time, God totally destroyed it according to the prophecies of the prophets. Involved uh, Alexander Great. How uh, they're on the seacoast and they went out to this little island. And God says, I'm going to destroy that little island. And, that, and it says about uh, Tyre, it will be a place for fishermen nets. And if you go over the, the area where Tyre was, it's rocks. It's all it is. And guess what are on those rocks if you catch them at the right time? Fishermen lay out their nets to dry them. It's a city that won't last very long. Brought much cedar wood to David. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender. And the house that he builded for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent. That's the only time that word shows up, and that word is not, if you type it in, your spell check is going to get angry with you. 
So David comes up with two non-words. Magnifical. And to him I did today. Oh, he was great. He's the greatest. Of fame. Oh, look at that. Everybody ought to know about this place Psalm is going to build. And of glory throughout all country. All the places in the world to know about the temple that David prepared in his heart that Solomon built. The Queen of Sheba came. The Ethiopian came. It would be Herod's temple, but he came. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly, there's that word again, before his death. So unto the death of David, when we read the death of David, he, you know, he grew so old. But while he could, he stockpiled, he got for this, for this assembly, for Solomon before he builds. So when Solomon starts building, there's already material there prepared for him. And we're going to stop there. So we're going to get into Solomon. We're going to get some specialness of Solomon. Uh, we did the, the tender mercies, of, I mean, the pure mercies of David. And they follow over into Solomon, his son.